didn't have the correct information on what start the war and what stopped Nigeria for implementing the Aburi Accord National Conference they had in Ghana, which is disturbing us and making us the younger ones not to understand our roots and where we are coming from and where we are going. To. And I think that is one of the major things that is misleading the younger ones, putting us in crisis of I am an Ipo, I am an Anam, I am a Yoruba, and I'm an Awesome, and see tomorrow. If okay. that issue is uh, not being discussed please, very well, please, I don't think that the, uh, the younger please, ones would. Chris, I'm going to have Professor Ndibe. Yeah. What, what version of the war? Where, who do we believe? Who started the war? He wants it in five minutes. Well, I bet you can do it in, three, in two minutes. No, I can't, actually. Um, there are so many books written about the war, and so we can't. It would be a disservice. Mm. The war is the most, the most important, the most significant event in Nigeria's history. Um, and so t for, for us to give two-minute or five-minute versions of it is to simplify Absolutely. something that is... But I think, actually, that if you think about the war, you go back to, again, the poor formation of the Nigerian mm. nation, mm. the fact that Nigeria wasn't formed as a nation, the fact that when the first coup in 19, of 1966 happened, January, 6, uh, January 15, that that coup was at first welcomed universally mm. within Nigeria before um, looking at the skewed nature of the casualties in, in that coup, yeah. um, it was spawned as an attempt by Easterners to seize control of the country. Yeah. And so you had the counter coup mm -hmm. that ultimately led to uh, mass killings of Igbos, genocide really. Yeah. I mean, there's no other word for it. Um, and so, but part of it is that the British cobbled together a nation called Nigeria. Yeah. But it wasn't a nation. So it was our job to create a nation out of this behemoth mm. that the British have put together. Mm. We have not done that job. And so my point is that we better do it. And if we can't do it, then it is best rather than kill more and more millions yeah. of Nigerians for us to agree to be go our separate yeah. ways. B Biafra is a very animated uh, dis uh, top, uh, topic of discussion for Nigerians from different perspectives. Abin Bola, uh, good evening. How are you today? Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, where are you calling from, please? Uh, I'm calling from Liverpool. Okay, Abin Bola, Professor Ndibe is here with you. Yes, my contribution is because I've listened to what other people have said, both people here in London and, you know, people against and for. I think Nigeria's problem is a dynamic one. Hmm. If people are celebrating they've done road, that's because roads have never been done in the last 20, 30, 40 years. And I think it's right for anybody to say the government is doing something. You cannot, we cannot keep comparing Nigeria to the United Kingdom or America. Oh, Obama would do this if he was there. We don't have that kind of institution. Our democracy is just starting. Things that are nothing to people in the UK are something to people in Nigeria. Because they've never had a government who cares about them. So when people do small things, they will be very excited about this and they will shout. And I believe the government, you know, should be praised for whatever little they've done. Okay, and they should be castigated for whatever they are doing wrong. They are doing wrong. I've been more like tense. Uh, sorry to cut you short. Uh, let, Professor, let, let, Professor let, me, let me quickly ask Mr. Bimbala, would, you have, would, would, would a Bimbala, well, I'm sure yeah, he's watching, yeah, yeah. but I'm wondering, would a Bimbala hire, given the job that Jonathan is doing, or the 30, 36 state governors are doing, would Mr. Bimbala, if he had a, 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 a private business, would he hire any of them to run his business? So it's easy to say a governor builds a road that should, it go, should go without saying. That's part that, of their responsibility. Precise. I mean, you never hear any government, not even, we're talk, I'm not comparing Nigeria to Britain or to the U.S. Let's co compare Nigeria to Ghana, to Botswana, to South Africa, to Kenya, to, Zim, to Zimbabwe, right? Which is a mess. To Uganda. Now, I went to Uganda and spoke to a driver there. I said, what is the power situation, electricity situation in, in the country? And he said, bad. And I said, how bad is it? How, how often do you have power failures? Yeah. He said, twice a week, right? I stayed, I stayed in Kampala for two weeks. I didn't see one power outage. For a Ugandan, because he has high expectations of his country, twice a week is bad. Yeah. But Nigeria, once you give them power to watch a soccer game, mm. they say, ah, Nepal is trying. And so on and so forth. Godwin. Good evening, Godwin. Good evening. Uh, where are you calling from, Godwin? 
I'm coming from London, please. Uh, go ahead with your contribution, please. I, I, I want to thank uh, the prof for, uh, for his contribution. Uh, honestly, uh, we need more brilliant uh, human beings like him. Mm. Uh, I'm not surprised that many people are calling in, talking about building of roads as, um, as achievement. In fact, in Nigeria, people talk about 10% as uh, achievement. Salaries, yes. This is sheer nonsense. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Nigerians have lost focus. I, I know of a governor that graded roads somewhere around the market area, and then somebody came in and said he was doing roads. No grading of roads, not even fast, no drainage, nothing. Nigerians grow above their things and they look at substance. Somebody called to talk about telephone, that was also not telephone. Forgetting that the much of fact before uh, the GSM came to Nigeria, uh, Togo, yes. Cameroon, mm -hmm. GSM. In fact, I know I first telephone my first handset, who was the second hand handset from Togo. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I had a Togo way using telephone. So, what did in appearance to, I mean, some people don't quite understand. We have a contraction called Nigeria. Okay, uh, we're going to... We need to sit down. Yeah, th 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 right. thank what you. We go to uh, thank you for your contribution. Uh, on Twitter, trends as uh, Wednesday, 8th of August 2013. Number one, BBA The Chase. Beth Lee also recently made history as the first Nigerian rep representative at Big Brother Africa. The Chase to have sex in the room. Well, she's in the news again. She makes out with Bimp in the jacuzzi. Reactions went a wire on social media, Twitter, with a handful of Nigerian viewers expressing their disgust and disappointment. Shockingly, some felt that was good, and TV host Dan Rele went into with uh, Nwashuku, former winner of BBA, also came out to defend Beverly in a series of tweets responses earlier today. Uh, Osu flirting with Bimp in jacuzzi, she's got to go around. Well, that's Nigerians. When you go on social media, the discussion that trends will be about sex. Uh, secondly, you had Yerima trended this week. Then waiting leak. Operation mm -hmm. Save the World's Children from the disease of Beverly Adaosu. That was another thing. Uh, I didn't really I do thank you. Back to the serious topic, Professor Ndibe, which is uh, politics in Nigeria. What is wrong with politicians in Nigeria, you steal the money, you bring it to Europe, uh, America, buy big houses, and not make the sensible case of investing the money at home. Yes. What's the problem? Well, the thing is that somebody who is in the business of stealing is not in the business of thinking. So, so that somebody who steals, mm. it, it, part, of the, part of the idea of stealing is an absence of the imagination. Uh, Nigerian leaders want to steal and buy homes in South Africa, in the U.S., in the U.K., in France, in Canada, and so on. And they buy homes in these places because these are societies that have certain comforts and societies where there is security, see. What they forget is that these places were built by the imagination and energy of people like themselves. Okay? Now, the critical difference, there's corruption in different parts of the world, the world yeah. okay? There's corruption. But at least everywhere or most places have in place a way of addressing the issue of corruption. So when you, when you get caught being corrupt, you don't find people from your ethnic group of your, from your hometown saying he's a son of the soil. We're defending a thief. And so sometimes when I write against Igbos who are corrupt, some Igbos attack me and they say, you know, oh, you are... You're foolish. You're attacking our people, right? And I remind them, uh, when a Nausa person steals, I'm opposed to it. When a Yoruba person steals, I'm opposed to it. For example, I tell people, Obasanjo was a disaster as president. Mm -hmm. And it was a disaster not for the Igbo and for the Yoruba and so on. It was a disaster for all Nigerians, including Yoruba people. Um, yeah, we are almost coming to the end of the program. Uh, it's been an exciting time today. Of course, we have uh, Professor Ndibi. Lai Mohammed, what happened? I uh, would have to hear his story another day. 
This program is for you uh, from Ben TV, live from the UK. Next week is going to be an open mic season where we will allow everyone to call in from the uh, beginning of the program to the end and we we'll discuss Nigeria. would like to thank you for watching today. Professor Ndibe, your last words. Well, my last words again is that I hope that enlightened elements are going to come out in full force in the next elections and begin to look critically at hopeful, what I call hopeful candidates, and to give them support. And then hold these hopeful candidates to certain commitments, okay, to come up with an idea for moving the country really forward towards prosperity and towards development and finally towards the forming of a Nigerian nation. Professor Ndibe, it's been a pleasure having you. Uh, you've been an exciting guest. Viewers, thank you for watching Politics Today on Ben TV. Uh, we're here every Thursday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. UK time. For our viewers in Nigeria, we thank you for your Twitter messages, messages of encouragement. You can make it perfect. It's Politics Today from Ben TV. Tonight by Mr. Amor and Mr. Melody from Ben TV. Best designer wins return ticket to Lagos. Best models win £200 cash. Doors open at 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. and your dress code is smart, stylish and fashionable. Ladies, you are free before 11 p.m., £20 thereafter. This event is supported by... Basically, it's an association of all the 36 democratically elected governors in the country. I became director general, I think, four years ago. The president, I mean, and the vice president used to be members of the association. It's a legal body, and, and, and it's, we, we, we have our records together, and we have professionals. Watching Ben Television, the Bridge and the Gap channel. Ben TV and First Focus Media presents the Ankara Festival 2013, the sixth anniversary. Get ready for the biggest annual event on Carnival Bank Holiday Saturday, the 24th of August at the Cuban Bar 1, Ropemaker Street, City Point, EC2Y, 9AW. On board the Ankara Fashion Runway will be top models, live PAs and a massive after party with DJ Unbeatable, DJ Young Millie, DJ Spencer and DJ Untouchable plus a special international guest DJ. It's all hosted on the night by Mr. Amor and Mr. Melody from Ben TV. Best designer wins return ticket to Lagos. Best models win £200 cash. Doors open at 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. and your dress code is smart, stylish and fashionable. Ladies, you are free before 11 p.m., £20 thereafter. This event is supported by... Basically, it's an association of all the 36 democratically elected governors in the country. I became director general, I think, four years ago. The president, I mean, and the vice president used to be members of the association. It's a legal body, and, and, and it's, we, we, we have our records together, and we have professionals. Oh, it's your boyfriend, KC, a.k.a. Opa